The core theme of the original Metal Gear Solid was genes, and its connection to fate in a way, as every major character in the game is tied to this theme in one way or another. Be it like Dr. Naomi Hunter, a member of the radio support team whose work as a geneticist helped keep Snake from freezing during his time in Shadow Moses, while also leading to the creation of Fox Die or the Genome Soldiers, who are the guards at the base of Shadow Moses and act as your standard enemies throughout most of the game. They all had their genes tampered with and infused with Big Boss's own soldier genes, resulting in them all being clones of him in a way, and sympathetic to the cause of the man who was tied most to the binds of his genetics, this being the game's main antagonist, Liquid Snake, the man who will never be game over. Integral. That's the stage. 小島秀夫監督作品メタルギアソリッドインテグラル難易度全5ランク Liquid Snake is the recessive genetic clone of Big Boss and one of the most recurring villains in the entirety of the Metal Gear series. Though, interestingly enough, even while his presence has been felt in multiple entries in the series, how he has appeared in each game is entirely different each time. He is also someone whose life was driven by their obsession with their genes and the fate tied to them, constantly feeling the need to prove himself better than them, and this directly resulted in the man that he became. Though before we get into that, let's first First, understand the meaning behind his name and design. So let's start first with the obvious, his code name, Liquid Snake, which was chosen in universe and out of universe for a multitude of reasons. But the main one being to parallel with his twin brother's code name, Solid Snake, with Liquid being selected as the opposite state of matter to a solid, as Liquid himself is a polar opposite to Snake. Though Liquid retained that Snake portion of the code name, likely as a way to pay reference to his old father's code name, Naked Snake, when in reality the Snake portion of the name was selected for Solid Snake to reference Snake's own stealthy nature and their abilities to blend into the background. Along with this, Liquid was also given the code name by Kojima because he wanted a villain that could match Solid Snake, as he considered the ultimate antagonist to be someone who is as skilled or better than the protagonist in a specific field. So that way you have someone to overcome in the end. This is also likely why the boss was given her code name as well in Metal Gear Solid 3, which, interestingly enough, Liquid is actually very similar visually to the boss with both of them being blonde-haired, blue-eyed soldiers who are experts in hand-to-hand -hand combat and the superior soldier to their opposing snake. They also both have an exposed chest in their final boss fight, and speaking of his design and his trench coat specifically, the trench coat Liquid War in Metal Gear Solid 1 has been recontextualized in Metal Gear Solid 4 to be the same type of jacket that his father would wear, which is in a way Liquid paying homage to Big Boss. The design itself could also be in direct reference to a specific character, this being Colonel Silver from the Red Ribbon Army in the original Dragon Ball manga and anime, as Silver was a very similar person to Liquid in both personality and ability, even including a scene, albeit from an opposite perspective, where Silver uses a stinger missile to destroy Goku's Nimbus in a similar way that Snake shoots down Liquid's helicopter. Along with this, Silver and Liquid both share a Japanese voice actor. Liquid Liquid also has a tattoo of a modified version of the Rod of Asclepius, which replaces the wand with a sword to represent Liquid's more darker side. It was also likely chosen because it's a very famous symbol of a snake. Though, when he was born, he wasn't born Liquid Snake. His name originally assigned to him was Eli, which is a name directly in reference to the biblical character of Eli, who, due to the sinful actions of his sons, had his family cursed with tragically short lifespans, which is referenced in the form of Liquid being a child cursed by his father, as Big Boss was very against the existence of his cloned children. So I was worried about what happened to you, your sons. They're no sons of mine, and they're sure as hell not me. Just a bunch of cells grown in a lab? What they are is much sicker than that. But also, the short lifespans is represented in the accelerated aging afflicted onto the clones of Big Boss. Your cells, blood, organs, nerves, skeletal system, muscle tissue, every part of your body is aging rapidly. But, to an extent, Fox Die also fits this formula, and would ultimately be both Liquid and Big Boss's true undoing. 
Though long before his time as Liquid Snake, Eli lived a relatively normal life in England, being brought there by Major Zero after the cloning process was complete. Though around the time that Eli turned seven, he learned the truth about his existence, which he wrongly assumed was chosen for him by Big Boss himself, which of course caused him to hate his father and his twin brother. This frustrated Eli to the point that he chose to run away from home to prove himself better than Big Boss. And while visiting Africa, Eli broke free from his handler and formed a child soldier unit. From here, he would go on to earn the new code name of White Mamba as he was the only white member of his group. And the Mamba is just a type of snake, so essentially his codename was White Snake, which could in fact be a reference to the secret white snakes that you can find in Metal Gear Solid 3's final boss fight against the boss. This era in Eli's life is actually full of direct references to the famous novel Lord of the Flies, which a lot of Eli's design is reflected in this, from the cruel nature of him and his units matching the themes of Lord of the Flies right down to there being a dead boar head in the middle of his room and a conch shell to his side, though it's pretty transparent how much Lord of the Flies had an influence over this unit when you reach the mission literally labeled the Kingdom of the Flies. This has led me and a few other people to refer to this unit as the Lord of the Flies unit. They also became such a problem that Diamond Dogs was called in to take care of them, resulting in a conflict between Eli and Venom Snake, where Venom overwhelmed Eli with his superior combat training and made it apparent to Eli how big the gap between him and his perceived father really was. He was then captured and brought back to base where his rebellious tendencies would get him into trouble quite a few times. Though, he would learn the hard way that he is out of his league physically on this base. Besides just Venom Snake, Revolver Osla also was able to put him in his place. So instead, Eli began scheming and sneaking around the base, eventually sneaking aboard the helicopter that was coming to support Venom Snake in his battle against Skullface and Sahalanthropus. And it was this moment that everything changed for Eli, as him being there resulted in him gaining the advantage for the first time, as Liquid's hatred for his father and his perceived worthlessness attracted the attention of the third child, who would later become his ally, Psychomantis. And these two together would be able to steal control of Sahalanthropus from Skullface. Such a lust for revenge! Though eventually the Metal Gear would be put to a stop by Big Boss, though even after being defeated, Eli continued his scheming to undo Mother Base from within. This can be seen in multiple forms, from causing accidents to acting out in rebellion, though eventually Eli would soon use the power of Psycho Mantis to retake control of a repaired Metal Gear Sahalanthropus and escape Diamond Dogs to create his own Kingdom of the Flies. Though in doing this, he attracted the attention of both Cypher and Diamond Dogs, resulting in a battle where both sides were fighting against Eli and his Metal Gear, until he was subdued and about to be executed when Venom saved Eli before taking the brunt of a grenade which rattled his mind, resulting in temporary color blindness, which in turn resulted in Venom accidentally shooting Eli. But lucky for him, he was wearing a bulletproof vest under his hazmat suit. Though the reason he was wearing the suit to begin with is the fact that he had willingly ingested the English strand of the vocal cord parasite, which was secretly recovered by Psycho Mantis while Diamond Dogs was finishing off Skullface. This resulted in Diamond Dogs calling for a Scorched Earth plan, where they will napalm strike the island with Eli still there. Though before the escape, Venom left Eli with a pistol that he could end his life with, which to him was one final insult from a man he hated the most. That's right. Don't blame yourself. Blame me. Thus, his first action with the gun is to threaten Venom with it before ultimately accepting his fate and placing it against his head. Though, luck struck again for Eli here, as before his life would end, Psycho Mantis would return and save him, considering him to be his first friend. Along with this, he also removed the vocal cord parasite from Eli, and then floated the two off the island as it was being destroyed. The two would then end up in America, where they both decided to go their own separate ways for the time being, 
but would reunite again in the future. Eli would return to England and begin his decorated military career as Liquid. He then joined the British Special Air Service and became the youngest person to ever join their ranks, thanks in part due to his genes and his motivation to prove the world and his father wrong. Liquid excelled in just about everything he did, from language to mastering English, Spanish, French, Mylai, Arabic, and Kakongo, but he also excelled in military skills like parachuting, rappelling, scuba diving, free climbing, and the use of small arms. But most importantly, his military vehicle expertise was his standout trait. As Liquid's skills behind the wheel of a vehicle is one of his most notable traits, shown in his multiple instances of piloting a Metal Gear throughout the series, and of course, during the Shadow Moses incident, when Liquid took on two F-16 fighter falcons in an inferior helicopter, the Hind D, and won, only to return unscathed to fight Solid Snake atop the Shadow Moses towers. Though it could be understood that part of Liquid's greatness came from his involvement with Revolver Ocelot, as Ocelot claimed that he would watch over Liquid at the end of Metal Gear Solid V. If the day ever comes that you go back to Cypher, I'll lay the other son. And then you and I will be enemies too. One of us will have to kill the other. And Liquid likely learned a lot of skills from Ocelot. One of these skills was likely sleeper agent tactics, which he then used to infiltrate Iraq during the Gulf War alongside the SAS in order to destroy some enemy Scud missiles, along with investigate the British Secret Intelligence Service. Which would seem like aspects of this backstory were actually in direct reference to a novel called Bravo 2-0 by Andy McNabb. Though in his time during the Gulf War, Liquid was taken prisoner and considered missing in action until 1994 when he was rescued by the United States military. Though his time serving in the Gulf War had him become very clearly aware of what the Gulf War Syndrome actually was, and how it had direct ties to the Genome Soldier Project. Then, only a year after his return to service, Liquid would hear about Operation Intrude N313, and how his twin brother, a relatively rookie soldier, Solid Snake, was chosen for the mission and successfully infiltrated Outer Heaven and killed Big boss. Furious, Liquid now hated his brother more than ever, feeling the only thing that he could do now was defeat Solid to prove his own superiority. And this hatred for his brother only grew stronger four years later when Solid Snake was selected for an infiltration mission in Zanzibar land. To add insult to injury, when Solid was given this mission, he was pulled out of retirement to do so. Here, Solid Snake yet again defeats and kills Big Boss, with the first time actually being a body double. And this, yet again, denied Liquid the only thing he ever wanted out of life. Though Big Boss's body would soon be put into cold storage, and was technically still alive, though Liquid didn't know at the time. From here, he would join Foxhound, the same special forces unit that his father founded and Solid Snake was working for. He then reunited with his childhood allies, Psycho Mantis and Revolver Ocelot, and together his branch of Foxhound would reintroduce code names into the organization, as they had been phased out when Roy Campbell took control. Soon, Revolver Ocelot would encourage Liquid to instigate an insurrection against the United States government on the Shadow Moses Islands, specifically at a nuclear weapon disposal facility where a top secret nuclear weapon was under construction. This was Metal Gear Rex. And if Liquid could get Rex under his control, he could prove once and for all that he was superior to Big Boss by achieving where he failed. As Liquid wanted to found Outer Heaven within Shadow Moses, a place for those who have no past to call their own and thus no future to look forward to, home. He was specifically targeting the Genome Soldiers, which he considered to be brothers in a way thanks to the gene therapy that they undertook. And with his charisma mixed with Psycho Mantis' own brainwashing abilities, Liquid was able to assemble an army of like-minded individuals rather quickly. Shadow Moses was overtaken rather fast by Foxhound, who are now calling themselves Sons of Big Boss. The name itself is in reference to the Genome Soldiers and Liquid both being genetically connected to Big Boss, along with all the members of Foxhound working with Liquid, having some sort of past with the man as well. Soon, Liquid would capture the president of Armtex, Kenneth Baker, 
and the DARPA chief Donald Anderson, who if you don't know is actually a member of the Patriots and was part of the original radio crew in Metal Gear Solid 3, he's Sigget. Though Sigget would soon die, which was reported as an accident but was indeed intentional on Ocelot's part to eliminate a member of the Patriots, which left Liquid with no choice but to try to trick his brother into gaining access to Metal Gear Rex. Psycho Mantis suggested that Decoy Octopus disguise himself as the DARPA chief and feed Snake information on how the PAL card works, which in reality was a long kong by the group to gain access to Rex without needing the DARPA chief's code specifically. Liquid would also manipulate Snake directly by assuming the identity of Snake's old mentor, this being Kazuhira Miller, also known as McDonald Miller, who in reality had been assassinated three days prior to the Shadow Moses incident in his home in Alaska, which in a way was Ocelot fulfilling a promise that he made to Miller way back during the times of Diamond Dogs. And then you and I will be enemies too. One of us will have to kill the other. Liquid then used his position to give Snake advice to help him unlock Rex, but also reveal to him the truth behind the operation, as Liquid has someone within the Pentagon who's on his side and feeding him information from their end, and how things are playing out during the Shadow Moses incident specifically, including Fox Die. Then, Liquid's main goal when it came to the Shadow Moses incident was also to defeat his brother and claim his birthright, as if he was able to beat Snake, that by proxy means he was able to kill Big Boss. Though, even with everything that he had, be it a group of powerful soldiers, a nuclear-equipped Metal Gear, and his own unstoppable will, Liquid still lost in the end, as Fox Eye surged through his body, though that same body wouldn't go to waste, as the Patriots would soon recover it and place it into cold storage for future use, though it would later be stolen and used by Philanthropy, which is Solid Snake and Otacon's own private military company, so it could be used to fake Snake's death in the tanker crash at the beginning of Metal Gear Solid 2, since the two were genetically similar. Though before this, Solidus was able to get his late brother's arm removed and placed onto Revolver Ocelot to replace the one that Cyborg Ninja had severed during the Shadow Moses incident, and it was this action specifically that would have catastrophic ramifications in the future, as Liquid is one to never admit game over. As soon enough, the arm would act as a catalyst for the spirit of Liquid Snake to dominate Revolver Ocelot's body, partly due to the fact that Ocelot's father was a supernatural spirit medium himself. This allowed Liquid to return in full during moments of the story in Metal Gear Solid 2, which is rather ironic that he would use his talents as a sleeper agent taught to him by Ocelot to take control of the same man years later. Though this would be Liquid's actual final appearance in the series canonically, as past this point, Ocelot would have the arm removed and replaced with a bionic one. Though, because he planned to overthrow the Patriots, he decided to use the liquid Ocelot identity as a good cover. Ocelot induced self-hypnosis on himself to make him believe that he was still under Liquid's personality's control. So, in a way, Liquid lived on in the form of a phantom, and worked to shut down SOP to prove his superiority yet again while also playing into the Lord of the Flies viewpoint of the world, where he wanted to create total chaos in the shutdown of SOP to prove that humanity was naturally cruel. Though, while he was successful in the first part, thanks to a modification to the Fox Alive virus that was injected into SOP, life's necessities weren't affected by the computer worm, and this prevented a global collapse. Thus, Liquid failed, even when he succeeded. Though his role in Metal Gear Solid 4 was in a way for Liquid to live up to Kojima's original desires for the character, as he was the ultimate final boss in that game, with Snake literally having to beat the last fragments of Liquid out of Ocelot, and ending with Ocelot himself saying that he was Liquid's doppelganger, meaning fully one Snake came out superior in the end. Though the reason that Liquid stayed so prevalent beyond his death was both due in part to Kojima regretting killing him so early, even having planned to originally bring him back in the original script for Metal Gear Solid 2, where he would be the antagonist of the first section of that game, but the whole idea had to be scrapped and the only remnant that remained was Ocelot's arm. Though the other reason Liquid returned so often was due in part to his just popularity, as Liquid is one of the most beloved villains in the series, which in part comes from his performance being one of the most memorable in the whole of the series. Snake! Did you like my sunglasses? You enjoy all the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? Not yet, Snake! 
It's not over yet! Brothers! I've been waiting for this! Along with this, his motivation to prove himself in the face of everything is somewhat inspirational in a way, even though he never realized that he was everything that he believed he wasn't, as Liquid was the superior clone, and... That's right. Until the very end, Liquid thought he was the inferior one. This can be understood in the gameplay very easily. First, of course, we have the fact that Liquid is the most durable of the two snakes, with him having nearly superhuman toughness, taking multiple rockets to the face and surviving multiple vehicle crashes, and falling from a height that even Liquid claimed would be impossible to survive. But Liquid is also inhumanly strong, and this is demonstrated perfectly in the sheer damage numbers of his punches. Though you might ask yourself, why does Liquid believe himself to be the inferior clone when it's so clear that he is the superior one? Well, it comes down to a misunderstanding on multiple fronts. So Liquid is a clone of Big Boss, comprised entirely of Big Boss's recessive genes. This is opposed to Solid, who was comprised of Boss's dominant genes. Though in Japanese, the terms for dominant and recessive genes are superior and inferior. This meant that when Liquid was referring to himself as having the inferior genes, he was referring to the Japanese term that was being confusingly localized. Which mixes with Liquid's misunderstanding of his own creation as well, as he believed Big Boss specifically chose him to have these genes, for Liquid to be made of the leftovers of the superior clone. When in reality, both Big Boss didn't like his clones at all, which didn't help his case, as from Liquid's perspective, he was just assuming that Big Boss hated him so much because he was inferior. Though on top of that, Big Boss's recessive genes were actually his superior ones, and Solid was in reality the inferior clone. Though due to his clouded mindset, Liquid could never realize this, and lost himself to his past, and... What makes Liquid's feud even sadder is that, in reality, he never actually met Big Boss, his father. All of his interactions with Big Boss was with his body double, Venom Snake, which makes Venom's line about never blaming himself hit all the harder. That's right. Don't blame yourself. Blame me. which makes the end of his character coming in the form of a body double himself mirror how he was a lot more like his father than he could have ever imagined. Not yet, Snake! It's not over yet! And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want to begin your own march towards a global superpower in outer heaven, well, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist, at buyshimonetta.com.